Good afternoon, everybody. This is Paul Usowitz with Community Credit Counselors, and we want to welcome you to this month's webinar, Gold Powered Spending Plan Basics. We're certainly glad you could join us today, and uh, basically we're going to be talking about your GPS, your Gold Powered Spending Plan Basics, as we said. <clears throat> so we'll get right to it. We want to welcome you. Uh, one of the first steps to financial security is planning and following through on a personal spending plan, or typically known as a budget. Now, budget is about choices, choosing how to make money and choosing how to spend money as well. All right. Here are the objectives of today's session. All right. At the end of the session, you're going to be able to list the steps for setting financial goals. Second, you'll be able to track daily spending habits. Third, we're going to prepare a personal spending plan to estimate your monthly income and expenses. Fourth, we are going to identify ways to decrease your spending. Fifth, we're going to identify ways to also increase your income. And last, we are going to identify some spending plan tools that will help you be, to be able to manage your bills. All right, so we'll go ahead and get right into it today. All right. Now, let's talk about, you know, uh, setting financial goals uh, as the first step of how to create a spending plan. Now, financial goals are specific to what you want to do with your money within a certain time period. Before you create an actual spending plan, you should complete the following steps to setting financial goals. Number one, you want to identify and write down your financial goals. Again, goals are going to be different for everybody, whether you're saving to send your kids to college, to buy a new car, to make a down payment on a house, go on a vacation, pay off those credit card debt, or retire. Writing down your financial goals to help you keep track of them is the first step. Second, once you've written them down and you've identified them, of course, then you want to organize your financial goals. What we mean by that is you want to break each financial goal down into several short term, which are less than one year, medium term, one to three years, and long-term, five years or more, goals. So you want to break it down into short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. Third, you want to educate yourself. Read personal finance magazines and books on managing and growing your money. There's a lot of good ones out there. Paid in Full is one of them by Ray and Shirley Knopfsinger. With a little effort, you can learn enough to make educated decisions that may increase your net worth many times over. Then identify small measurable steps that you can take to achieve these goals and put this action plan to work. The last step on setting financial goals is you want to evaluate your progress. You want to review your progress monthly, quarterly, or any other interval that you feel comfortable with, but at least at a minimum every six months to determine if your program is working. If you're not making satisfactory progress on a particular goal, then reevaluate your approach and make changes as necessary. Okay, so we're you know again first step you want to set financial goals. All right, now why create a spending plan? Why even bother with all this? A good way to start taking control of your financial situation is to develop a personal spending plan. Now a spending plan is a step-by-step -step plan for meeting expenses in a given period of time. Following a spending plan. Uh, number one, helps you to reduce anxiety of not knowing whether you have enough money to pay your bills when you are due, when they are due, rather. Excuse me. Two, it gives you a sense of control over your money rather than letting money have control over you because you have a plan. And third, it helps you build assets that will improve the quality of life for you and your family. A spending plan is all about choices, choosing how to use your money. Knowing what your income and expenses are every month will help you take control of your financial situation. All right, now let's talk about some spending plan steps. There are four steps to preparing a spending plan. Number one, keep track of your daily spending. We'll talk about that in a moment. Number two, determine your monthly income and your expenses. Three, find ways to decrease spending. And four, find ways to increase your income. Again, we are going to start with the first step and give you some ideas on keeping track of your daily spending. All right. 
Do you know where your money goes each month? Sometimes I sit there and used to wonder and say, where did it all go? We got this much in, it all went out, where did it go? Then I started to write out a daily spending plan. It's common for people to spend all the money they make and not have anything left over to save for their goals. Many people say they do not have anything to show for their hard work at the end of the month. How often have you taken $20 out of the ATM and at the end of the day not known where it all went? If you want to be in control of your money, you must understand where your money goes. And one way to do this is to keep a personal spending diary to record everything you spend. You can use this information to track your spending over a period of time, say a month, so that you can see how you are spending your money. All right, as you will see in a minute, uh, you want to you want to take uh, write down how much money you've already spent today, just as an example. This information is an important part of your budget or your personal spending plan. It will help you determine what spending you can cut out or cut back on in order to have money to pay your monthly bills and expenses or to save for your goals. After a week of tracking your daily expenses, uh, daily spending, take a look at the list and consider the items you purchase on a regular basis. Okay? These add up. Where can you save? Consider needs versus wants. Let me say that again. Consider your needs versus wants. Do you eat out at restaurants a lot? Maybe you can cut back at the number of times you go out to eat each week. Can you cut back on daily expenses, coffee, candy, soda, or cigarettes, that daily trip to the vending machine at the office? Do you have some services you don't really need? Do you have the premium cable television packages? Or can you reduce the service package or eliminate it? Now we will look, take a look at the next step, determining your income and your expenses. All right. The next step in preparing a personal spending plan, as you can see in front of you on the screen, is to determine your monthly income and expenses. We'll start with income. Income is money that comes to you from a variety of ways. Wages, self-employment income, public assistance, which might include temporary assistance for needy families or food stamps, child support or alimony you may receive, interest and dividends, social security, and other sources like tips. Now there are two categories of income. We have gross income and net income. Gross income is your total income without deductions. Net income, on the other hand, is gross income minus your deductions, such as Social Security and other taxes. Who knows why so much money is taken out of your paycheck for Social Security? Anybody venture to guess? All right. Well. Social Security is a potentially valuable insurance plan. On some um, pay stubs, it's called FICA, which stands for Federal Insurance Contribution Act. Social Security income includes the following. Sorry. Retirement benefits paid every month to eligible retired workers as early as age 62. It can also include disability benefits paid every month to eligible workers of all ages who have a severe disability. Family benefits paid every month to spouses and children of eligible retired and disabled workers. Survivor benefits paid every month to an eligible widow or widower and children of a deceased worker. And Medicare benefits paid as needed to help with those hospital bills and offers limited coverage of stays in skilled nursing facilities hospice care, and other medical services to people 65 or older, and also to younger people who are disabled. As you will see, in a, um, if you're 25 or older and am not already receiving Social Security benefits, you will receive a Social Security statement just before your birthday every year. I remember I, I get those every single year. This statement is a record of your earnings and the Social Security taxes you have paid during your working years. Okay. The statement provides estimates of the monthly Social Security retirement, disability, and survivor's benefits you and your family could be eligible to receive. If you see any mistakes on it, report them to the Social Security Administration using the telephone number on the statement. All right. Now we are going to discuss expenses. We're going to change gears. There are two kinds of expenses. 
fixed expenses do not change from month to month. Typically, you do not have any control over how much you pay. A rent, a mortgage payment, a car payment is typically a, or a fixed loan payment is an example of a fixed expense. Flexible expenses, however, change often from month to month. Now, you may have some degree of control over how much you pay. For example, if you decide to lower your thermostat during the winter to save on heating costs, you'll pay less, obviously, than you did the month before. Now, I'm going to read a list of other monthly expenses you have control over. As I read through this list, think about your needs versus your wants. Can you think of other ways to control the cost of these expenses? Savings. This is important. Always pay yourself first. Put savings at the top of your budget. Easier said than done, I realize, but make an effort to pay yourself first. Second, gas or oil. Ways to control costs at home include using weather stripping around doors and windows to keep old cold air out or in according to the season, or reducing or increasing the temperature on the thermostat so it runs less when you are away. When driving, keep your tires properly inflated and observe the speed limit. Electricity. Um, conserve energy by using ceiling fans. Uh, turn off lights and other appliances when you're not using them. Reduce or increase the temperature on the thermostat. So again, it runs less when you are away. And use weather stripping, as indicated above. Water. Conserve water by installing low-flow shower heads. Telephone. Here's another one. Reduce long-distance charges. Eliminate extra services like caller ID. And eliminate cell phones or landlines. Uh, landlines in today's society, my wife and I, we eliminated our landline about almost two years ago now. Strictly go with the cell phones and we saved um, at least $50 by doing so a month. All right, food. Shop for items on sale. And don't forget to use those coupons. Transportation or gas. Think about carpooling or get a monthly transit pass instead of a daily one. It'll save you some money. Car maintenance. Regular maintenance prevents more severe problems. Education. Your employer might have a tuition assistance program that can help you with education if you want to go back to school. Personal expenses. You can shop for clothes at less expensive stores, go out to eat less often, or rent movies instead of going to the theater. I love Redbox. Charity donations. You could give in kind gifts to charity like clothing or kitchenware instead of giving cash. And again, those are deductible normally as well. All right. Find ways to decrease your spending. If your expenses total more than your income, or if you want to save money, you need to decrease or cut back on spending. Decreasing spending increases the amount of money you have left each month, obviously. This is also referred to as increasing your cash flow. Take some time to think of some ways that you can cut back on your spending. We will Now we will also look at additional tips that can help you decrease spending. All right. Here's some tips to help you decrease spending or save more money, in other words. One, again, develop and follow a spending plan as we're discussing, a GPS. Two, carry small amounts of cash to limit your spending. Three, eliminate or control your use of credit cards. Four, avoid shopping for fun unless you have strong self-control to only window shop. Five, take your written savings goals as a reminder when you're shopping. Pull them out. Six, buy only what you need versus what you want. We've said that a couple times. All right. Seven, use a grocery shopping list to prevent impulse buying. Eight, take your lunch to work rather than eating out. Nine, shop around for the best deal on big ticket items like cars and appliances. Ten. Pay your bills on time to avoid late fees, extra finance charges, utilities being turned off, evictions, repossessions, and the cost of a bad credit rating overall. And last, what I'm going to mention here, use direct deposit for your paycheck or federal benefits like Social Security. You will not have to pay to have your check cashed, or if you have a checking account, the bank may reduce or eliminate the monthly fees if you have direct deposit. Using direct deposit for your paycheck and your state or federal benefits not only saves money, it is also safer and easier than using paper checks. Following are some common misconceptions about direct deposit and the corrected facts. 
just going to go over a couple. Myth, receiving paychecks or benefit amounts in the form of a paper check gives you more control over your money because you can deposit it at your bank or credit union when it is convenient for you. The fact, with direct deposit, your money is immediately accessible, it eliminates the risk of stolen checks and forgeries, and it helps protect you from identity theft. Next, myth. Switching to direct deposit is time consuming and a hassle. The fact, enrolling in direct deposit is usually pretty fast and easy. If you receive Social Security or Supplemental Security income, call Go Direct's toll-free helpline at 1-800-333-1795, visit www.godirect.org, or contact your local bank or credit union to sign up for direct deposit. Let's cover one more. Myth. If you use direct deposit, you will not know when your money is in your account. The fact is, you can be sure your money is in your account by the time your bank opens on payment day. Again, paper checks can be lost or stolen. All right. All right. Now we're going to talk about some ways, finding ways to increase your income. We talked about cutting back. Now we're going to talk about finding ways to increase your income. Beside decreasing your spending, and obviously an obvious ways to increase your income, like getting a second job, there are other options for increasing your income that you might not have considered. And these are tax credits, and they include the Earned Income Tax Credit, EITC or EIC, in other words, a child tax credit, a credit for child and dependent care expenses, education credits, and tax credits for retirement savings contributions. All right. The EITC, or Earned Income Credit, is a federal income tax credit for people who work but do not earn high income. If you qualify, EITC reduces the amount of tax you owe and you may receive a refund. You may even be eligible for advanced EITC, which allows you to receive part of the credit in each paycheck during the year. If you qualify for EITC in the past, you may contact your employer to sign up. The Internal Revenue Service, IRS, adjusts income eligibility each year, so be aware of that. Second, receiving an EITC does not affect eligibility uh, for Medicaid, SSI, food stamps, or housing assistance. If you do qualify for a tax refund, be careful of refund anticipation loans. These types of loans can be very expensive. Plus, if you do not get the refund you expected, you will still be responsible for paying off the entire amount of the loan. I would try to stay away from those. For additional information about the EITC and other tax credits, or to get answers to other tax questions, you can visit the IRS website at www.irs.gov or call them at 1-800-829-1040. For assistance in preparing and filing your income tax return, you can use the services available through the IRS Coordinated Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program or Tax Counseling for the Elderly Program. All right. the, the, those two types of programs offer free income tax assistance for low income, disabled, elderly, and non-English speaking taxpayers. Most sites also offer a free electronic filing or e-filing. To find the location of those one of those offices in your area, call your local IRS office and ask to speak to Taxpayer Education Coordinator or call the IRS at 800-829-1040. Again, when you speak to someone from the government or other organization, remember to write down his or her name or identification number. Okay. Now that you know how to prepare a spending plan, we will talk about some of the tools that can help you keep track of your income and expenses. All right, first thing we're going to talk about is keeping accurate records. We've addressed this in, in a prior webinar very briefly. To successfully implement a spending plan, you obviously must keep accurate records. Here are some record-keeping tips to help you maintain accurate records. One, keep records in a safe place in your home or in a safe deposit box. Two, organize your file so it's easy to find your earnings and spending information and to update important financial information. Three, keep your tax records for at least three years. And lastly, mail checks for bill payments at least one week before they are due to avoid late fees. There are many spending plan tools 
that you can help you that, that, that to help you keep spending and savings records and carry out your budget, including the monthly payment schedule, the monthly payment calendar. We talked about that before having a calendar, the expense envelope system, the budget box system, and a computer system or a computer spreadsheet system. All right. We are going to talk about some other spending plan tools. We're going to talk about three of them in general, as you see there. Uh, the first one is the expense envelope system. Now, this tool is useful if you pay your bills in cash each month. Make an envelope, a white envelope for each expense category. Examples, rent, gas, food. Label the envelope with the category name, the amount, and the due date. Next, divide the income you receive into the amounts to cover the expense listed on the envelope. And then pay bills right away so you're not tempted to spend the money on anything else. Okay. Second one, the budget box system. The budget box is a small box with dividers for each month with one divider for each day of the month. When you receive a bill, check the due date, place it behind the divider that represents the bill's due date. As you receive income, pay your bills right away so you will not be tempted to spend your money on something else instead. That's what I use, the budget box system, but whatever works for you. Third, computer spreadsheet system. If you have access to a com personal computer, you can create your own spreadsheet with columns for your income, the date it is received, expenses, their due dates, and the date you paid the bill. Include space under the income and expense columns to total each. Use the help function of your spreadsheet software for instructions if needed. Personal finance programs are also available for less than $75, but you don't need to go out and buy one unless you have that money to be able to spend. Using a computer to manage your finances is relatively simple. Updating information is quick and easy. It is important to enter transactions frequently to truly understand your financial position. All right, you are now aware of various spending plan tools. Again, select ones that you are most comfortable using. All right, <clears throat> there are just a couple more things we need to know about budgeting. What happens when there's more expenses than income? Or if somebody said there's more uh, month than uh, money. All right. If your, day, if your spending diary or monthly income and expense worksheets show that you have more expenses than income, there are ways to get out of trouble. But remember, everyone has different priorities. You will have to make the decisions that are right for you. What payments do you think you should make first if you do not have enough money to pay all your bills? Generally speaking, it is most important to pay your necessary household expenses first, your rent or your mortgage, your utilities, and your food. Think about the health and the safety of your family when making these types of decisions. You always want to have a roof over your family's head, water and electricity, and food on the table. These are your basic needs. Therefore, you may need to pay your rent or mortgage before paying other bills, such as a telephone or credit card bill, to avoid foreclosure or being evicted. Many utility companies have programs to lower your bill if you qualify. If you think you need assistance, contact your local utility company to see what programs it offers. You may also be able to receive assistance from local, state, and federal agencies and organizations. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. If you are having trouble paying all of your loans, all right, if you can pay your monthly expenses but are having trouble paying all of your loans, then consider the following. One, paying off the loan with the highest interest rate first to save on interest payments. Two, talk to your creditors. Your creditors may be willing to reduce your payments or change the terms to accommodate your situation. Some creditors might offer extensions, accept smaller payments over a longer period of time, or even accept partial payments. And getting credit counseling. If you're not disciplined enough to create a workable spending plan and stick to it, cannot work out a repayment plan with your creditors, or cannot keep track of mounting bills, you might contact a reputable credit counseling organization, such as Community Credit Counselors Incorporated. Many credit counseling organizations are nonprofit, as we are, and work with you to resolve your financial problems. Reputable credit counseling agencies can advise you on managing your money and debts, 
help you develop a spending plan, and offer free educational materials and workshops. Their counselors are certified, as all of ours are, and trained in areas of consumer credit, money and debt management, and budgeting. A good counselor will discuss your entire financial situation with you and help you develop a personalized plan to solve your money problems. An initial counseling session will typically last about an hour with an offer of follow-up session. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about, a last resort only, is declaring bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is a legal proceeding that adjusts the debts of individuals who cannot meet their credit obligation. All right. Bankruptcy, number one, eliminates most debts. However, certain back taxes, child support, alimony, and student loans must still be paid. Second, bankruptcy may force you to pay higher credit rates and receive less favorable terms on loans in the future. That's why it should be an option of last resort. Third, it may make it difficult to get a mortgage, open a bank account, buy life insurance, and even get a job because creditors and employers can run a credit check to determine your history of past financial commitment. And lastly, bankruptcy is very serious and stays on your credit report for 10 years. So again, use it only as a last resort. The law requires you to get credit counseling before you file for bankruptcy. And again, if you have no other option, then you can file. And community credit counselors also offer that last course as well the, for bankruptcy. All right, so let's we're ready to wrap it up. Here's what we've learned. We've learned about the benefits of budgeting. We've learned, second, how to create a spending plan to track your daily spending and monthly income and expenses. We've talked about some tools to you. We've talked about other considerations to keep in mind when planning your budget. That's going to wrap it up today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar and got some good, useful information. Uh, we thank you for attending Community Credit Council's presentation of Money Smart, Money Matters. We hope you enjoyed it. We look forward to you, to you joining us next month for our Money Smart Pay Yourself First, why you should save, 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 save. And as always, we hope you'll like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash community credit counselors and follow us on Twitter at CCCI Tweet. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Again, I thank everybody for joining us today. We hope you have a wonderful, safe holiday season. And remember, stay on your GPS, your gold-powered spending plan. All right, this is Paul Usowitz. Have a great day. Thank you.